Welcome to CalCast, your creator national podcast. God Network News, Episode 152. Welcome, GNN fans, to another episode of God Network News, the podcast that tells you what God's doing around the world, not what CNN tells you, but what GNN tells you is going on in the world. If you're tired of listening to all of that crisis network news and you want to hear what God's doing, well, give us a listen. Greetings, God Network News fans, to another great series that we'll be doing on movements for these next few weeks. We've got some exciting podcasts that have been recorded by some colleagues of ours, all on the topics of movements, what makes movement leaders, what makes a movement, all kinds of exciting things. We're going to be focusing a lot on what God's doing in this season of missions, which is movements of peoples, whole people groups to Christ. There's amazing things happening, miracles everywhere. One of our organizations that we are partnering with, 2414, is already monitoring 1,360 movements. And each of these movements have over 56,000 new believers among them. And these are just amongst unreached people groups. So God is up to something really fantastic. And we're going to be looking into this in the next few weeks of our podcast of God Network News. Portions of our podcast will be made up of of rebroadcasted podcast interviews from a friend of ours named Steve Addison. Steve Addison is a great podcaster and very passionate about movements of peoples to Christ. And Steve has his own podcast, very successful podcast, with over 226 podcast episodes. And the name of his podcast is On the Road to No Place Left. And we highly recommend that you subscribe to his podcast because he has an overwhelming library of exciting topics related to movements. And if you want to learn more about movements, this is the place to find the information. And he has lots of training and tools and other resources that will really make your investigation of this topic successful. So we really want to thank Steve Addison and his partners there at movements.net forward slash podcast. That's how you can find it at movements.net forward slash podcast for all of the resources that he has given us for these next few podcasts. Thank you very much, Steve. So let's get right into the interview between Jeff Sundell and Steve Addison. Jeff, give us give us an update. So what's happened for you in the last week or two? Definitely uh, interesting times um, for sure. Um, I have been in South Asia. We sort of had a planned uh, meeting where I was headed to South Asia to do some training, coaching, mentoring. And uh, my wife, uh, Angie, was coming back to watch uh, a baby, grandbaby be born. Uh, So anyhow, I got about two weeks into that in South Asia. And up till last Friday, man, we're blowing and going. You're just rolling with training. And then everything just came to a screeching halt. I think it was Thursday night, actually, Friday morning. And so probably spent about four or five days up, maybe 30, 40 minutes of sleep in four or five days, uh, just sort of triaging some of the stuff around the globe uh, related to NPL and E3 and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, And in the midst of that, one of the phone calls we had, um, we were, uh, you know, there's a lot of men, what do you do? in this time. I mean, cause everybody's having to adjust, you know? And, um, so, you know, just into social media or man, reaching out to some friends and starting a discovery Bible study. How do you love loud when you're not allowed to be near people, you know, and mm-hmm. just all kind of challenges, you know, and, and then in a place where there's 
2 billion people, you know, and just thinking of what that's like. And, um, so in the end, it became very clear the net was closing. I was not going to be reunited with my wife anytime soon if I continued to stay there. And everything we had planned literally got canceled within about yeah. 24 hours for the next several weeks. So I just sort of made a call to come back home and um, really just because it's not good for a man to be separated from his wife. <laughs> it's, um, but anyhow, I, I had to come through New York City. And, um, you know, and, and you just do what you got to do there. But so I'm actually back home. I have seen my wife at a distance. I have. Um, so you're, you're isolated and, from Angie. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm I got four. Well, I'm just I'm about eight days into my 14 day quarantine <laughs> living in a camper in Booger Holler. Um, I'm up here on the top of the hill in a truck because we couldn't get the Internet to work. You know, so taking walks in the woods, doing a little praying cooking my own food, all that fun stuff. Oh my. I think we all want to know what you're cooking on your own is my next question. <laughs> Man, I'm grilling veggies like crazy. I'm trying to eat healthy in the midst of all this chaos. So a uh, little odd for me to be grilling veggies, but I'm also at the mercy of whatever my wife brings to me because I'm not going out in public. Um, but what, what, what do you think God's up to in all of this? Well, that's the sort of I was going to shift. You know, we were on a call the other day, and, you know, there's a lot of wrestling right now. What do you, what do, you do? So one in a response of what do we do uh, as far as loving loud, caring for people. I mean, in some ways, keeping distance from people is a good way to love loud um, also. But also just, man, what can we do to care for neighbors? Um, yeah. And what do we do with our, our spheres of influence that we love and care about? You know, and so we've been wrestling through that. You know, there's great stories of, people calling up old high school friends and asking to do a discovery Bible study. And they're saying, yes. I mean, one guy had a hundred percent say yes. Um, but the piece we were wrestling with is this idea of, Hey, should we fast and pray, you know, about this situation? And I think it's always good to fast and pray, no doubt. Mm. But I, I just said, well, man, I really think we need to go back and look. We, we called a time of fasting and prayer, January one through 31. And some people did 31 days, some did 40. I just said, man, we just really need to go back and just hear from God. What, what all did he speak to us? Let's reach out to the body. What are we hearing? Because the two things we prayed for very specifically was every people, every place engaged with the gospel of Jesus Christ through multiplying disciples, multiplying churches by 2025. There'd be teams in place. And then we also prayed that God would raise up the men and women that would do that. And something a little beyond a Luke 10 2. So just praying that Luke 10 2 prayer, but and praying for that one who's like Moses or praying for that one is like Aquila and Priscilla, praying for that one is like Paul or Apollos. And um, so that, that's just really got my heart, you know, just going, man, I feel like in the midst of the suffering, in the midst of the difficulty, because one of the common characteristics of movements, and even 10 years ago, we were wrestling with this piece of, you know, the Western European peoples is, you know, a lot of times there's tremendous suffering in the movements, especially if you look into Asia and Africa and the Middle East. And now we're going through a season of suffering that's difficult and it's, you know, it's costly. And, um, you know, but at, at the same time, suffering changes the soil of a heart yeah. and changes the soil of uh, people. So I think in one sense, yeah, we need to fast pray. Man, we want to do everything in the world to save every single life. But we also want to make sure we do everything to save every soul for Jesus Christ. But you know, the other piece I think we need to think about is though is man, what's God got on the other side of this, you know? And for me, that's where God really put this thing on my heart of going, man, what if he's raising up those Moseses? He's raising up those Pauls, those Aquilas, Priscilla's. Are we going to be ready on the other side of this with no place left to run out and find these folks? And, um, you know, we can't be sitting on our heels because if God, is answering those prayers from January and he's setting us up. Are we going to be poised to run after what God promised he's going to do? Cause we're not, again, we're not talking about our idea. This is a promise mm -hmm. that every nation, every tribe, every tongue, every city, every place, um, you know, and, and it's, and it's not even just necessarily about a church planting movement. It's about that every single person has the right to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ at least one time in their life. I'm You're listening to God Network News Podcast with your host, Cal Curtis. Look up our website at godnetworknews.com. 
54 years old and in the public place, you know, one time, Ron Barbagli shared the gospel with me in a public place, in the workplace. Mm-hmm. How many more people will never, ever have a chance? And this is the time to rise up and make sure, because that's, that's what it's all about. It's the church planning movements, the methods are, an, you know, they're, they're, a, they're a vehicle for this. But God's heart, God's promise is that he is very slow about his promise because he wants all men, all places to have an opportunity to repent and believe in Jesus Christ. And we have to believe that this is part of um, how he wants to use the body of Christ is to reach out and to love that sphere of influence and take the gospel to him. Right now, we may have to do it through media, but there's going to come a day soon where we're going to be set free and we need to be prepared to go. So that's sort of what God's been putting on my heart. So in the immediate term and maybe months, we need to find ways of loving and proclaiming the gospel with the people in our relational world especially. You know, one of the things Michelle and I have been doing is we just, we got a bread maker, we, we bake a loaf of bread every day, wrap it in uh, cling wrap, <laughs> wash our hands, you know, and then we're just at the door of one of our neighbours saying, look, we won't come in, but here's a loaf of bread. Um, have you got any needs? Maybe we're going to ask, can we pray for you in any way? Um, mm-hmm. So it, we need to find ways of connecting in the short term. But it yeah. sounds like you're also saying, you know, this could be a game changer. And one of the strategic things to do is let's be preparing for raising up those movement catalysts and multipliers that will take advantage of this open open door of opportunity. Yeah, and that's why I was talking to Peter. I, I wanted to really sort of switch, turn the tables on you and mm-hmm. um, sort of let Peter and I um, uh, pull an interview on you. Okay. Um, one of the things that God's really put on my heart is this idea of words, works, wineskin. You know, Steve sort of, coined that term. It was more more or less what Bruce Carlton always taught us is go to the word first. Um, When obstacles are God's greatest opportunity to work. So go to the word first, then look at the works of God, those case studies, those, you know, the things we know, the biographies, and then the wineskin. What is that new wineskin Mm -hmm. to that new place? And each wineskin might be unique to each place. Mm -hmm. And so the, the question, you know, Peter and I want to take and just sort of run to people over the next several weeks who um, are movement leaders, have a lot of experience in movements, um, been involved. This is almost to develop a profile. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think scripture gives us a good profile. So, I mean, just off the cuff, what what would be sort of, you know, in your mind, first question, the biblical profile of a movement leader. Mm -hmm. The second question would be, you know, you've interviewed numerous people. Yeah. Um, who've been involved in movements. And what are the things you've seen? What are the patterns you've seen? You're really good at, I think, exegeting scripture, but you're also really good at exegeting culture and um, people. And so, man, coming up and seeing those patterns that are common in these movement leaders. Now, we, with the problem is we may end up with the maximum. We're going to find these great yeah. movement yeah. leaders you know, on the maximum. But what we're looking for is we want to sort of shrink back a little bit. Maximum is what we want to develop. So the third question might be on a minimum, what's got to be there? Mm -hmm. Um, It's sort of like church. We can always say here, Hey, here's the maximum of a church. But when you're starting a church, I really need to shoot it. What's the minimum to get to the beginning of a church that'll let it grow into a healthy church. Same way with this movement leader. What's the core things, maybe head, heart, hands, yeah. that needs to minimum be with this guy, and now you could develop him. Because you. You, you and Peter are hijacking my interview then. That's what you're yeah. saying. Yes, we How are. Often? How often does that happen? That's the real question. Not often. Not, <laughs> not even Troy Cooper has the courage to do that. <laughs> well, I, would, I think I would tailor it first then. When you come back to that word piece, Steve, like what just jumps to your mind is that that movement leader in the Bible. I love how you said that, Jeff. That's where we start. So. Any few things just jump to your mind when you hear that? Well, I, what I love to say is um, none of us gets to rise above the Lord Jesus. And, you know, for me, it's only a few years ago. It's as though the, it finally I got it. 
and it had been in the scriptures the whole time. You know, there's Jesus in his baptism and his wilderness testing, about to launch the movement. What's the Father writing on his heart? And it's his identity. You know, the, the obedience to the Father's word, which is an expression of his love and submission. And so we're looking for that. We're looking for a dependence on the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. I mean, we're worried about a virus. Jesus gets thrust into the wilderness for 40 days to, to fight pure evil. And yet God is working out his purposes in that, that terrible time of trial and, and, and of hunger. So that dependence on the Spirit. And then, then finally committed commitment to the core missionary task of multiplying disciples and churches. And Jesus is willing to lay down his life for the sins of the world. He's also willing to walk away from people who just want the signs and wonders or just want the bread that he provides. And they'll make him king if, if they can just, you know, uh, see his miracle power, see the prosperity, all of those things. But he walks away because he's the bread of life. And so he stays on target. That mission for him at the heart of it is the making of disciples through faith in Christ. enjoyed this episode, please consider donating to help us continue to bring exciting stories fresh from the field. Visit our website at godnetworknews.com and select the PayPal link on the right side of the page or consider becoming a Patreon partner to receive access to more valuable materials exclusive to our members.